So I'm going to be trying to uh, replicate an experiment of a woman I saw online do um, where she was taking oil pastels and then she mixed them with a variety of ingredients, some baby oil, some linseed oil, and some wax. And then um, it made like a paste in a tin. So I'm going to use these little tins and I've got some jars here as well um, to uh, make this paste up and um, and then you can use that paste. I'll show you at the end how I use the paste but um, the paste basically is used to um, tone paper for like colored pencil or oil pastel or whatever on top. Um, and what she made, it looked really, it looked really great. So I want to try it out. So I'm going to, I've already chopped up a couple um, and I have had them soaking to, for aiding in, in shooting this video. But basically what you're going to need is um, some oil pastels. Now I'm using um, Holbein, which is just what I had on hand and she recommends a couple. I'll link her in the video box below, but um she, and you can see her recommendations on on pastels. These are what I had on hand, so this is what I'm using. Um, and she's used a whole stick. I tried a whole stick, but I bought two small jars. So I bought these little jars at the dollar store. And um, the whole stick filled the thing too much. So I'm doing like a half recipe right now to kind of try and because these are the jars I have. So a larger, a larger uh, container would be better than this. <clears throat> so to start, so I'm gonna do a yellow and a green one. And I've already got a blue and a red, and I believe a white already sitting. So what you do is you're just gonna peel the paper off and then just chop the, pastel up, just kind of make a little, the noise you hear in the background is A, my dog, <laughs> rolling around on the floor here, and uh, also you might hear lawnmowers and things, it's, it's um, Victoria Day today, and so a lot of people are just out doing lawn work and yard work and all that kind of stuff, because it's a nice day for that. So, you just kind of chop it up into, I'm, I'm assuming finer the better. It's actually kind of quite satisfying to sit here and there's something sort of enjoyable about sitting here and chopping up the colors. You know, if you had a muller, that would probably work even better, like once you got down to these fine particles, and although maybe it would make it a bit of a paste, I don't really know I don't have a muller, so I'm not gonna obviously try that, and I'm not gonna go out and buy one for this experiment. And all she did was chop it up with a razor blade, so that's what I'm gonna do. And then get those bits off. I'm just doing it on a bit of waxed paper, um, just to help it maybe glide off into the jar a little bit better. She used parchment. Again, I don't have any parchment, but I do have wax paper because I do some gold uh, leafing. So, um, anyway, just cleaning off that so I can reuse it. And then I'll just put it into my little tin. Ooh, little gee whiz. She's really being a noisy little booger today. parchment wouldn't stick as much as the wax paper, I suppose. Lulu, what's the matter, baby? Do you want out? I'll let you out of the studio, okay? Want out? 
She wants in, she wants out. It's just fussy today because I've got the door shut and I think that's what's bothering her. Normally I don't have the door shut to the studio, but John's downstairs watching TV, a murder mystery, and I just thought that might not be a good thing to be having in the background. Of this, do you want to Come on. Let's go. There you go. Go. Good girl. So, just try and pick up what I can here of any bits that didn't go in the tin. And then, so then what you need from here is you need some baby oil or mineral oil and some linseed oil. This is from Michael's. This is the what I had on hand. Again, I don't really do oil painting. I have some because I do have some oil paint and have used it for other things. But And the baby oil, I just got, uh, it's President's Choice, just a no-name baby oil. So for the full recipe, you need, um, oh, well, I'll link the recipe. I think it's one tablespoon or, or teaspoon of linseed oil and three of the mineral oil, but I, I don't, um, because I've divided it in half here so that I have it written down in front of me because I'm not really great with numbers and I forget numbers easily. So I cut it in half and these are my milliliter measurements. And so I'll just switch. So I need 2.4. So there's three, so there's two and a half. So two and a half is going to be pretty close to what I want. So I'll just draw that up. That's pretty good. Lots of the linseed oil. The smaller amount is the linseed oil. Just pop that into my tin. And I've just marked which one is which on my paper here so I know I'm not grabbing the wrong thing. And then same with the baby oil. The baby oil I need 7.39. So on here, there's seven, so it's going to be in between here and here. I know it's not going to be 100% accurate, but I'm hoping it's not like baking or something where it needs to be super accurate, as long as it's close, I'm hoping. So that's eight. Back it off a bit. go. Now these tins might be seem like they're a bit bigger than those jars, which seems counterintuitive. So when I looked at the dough, oh no, it's filling up, I guess. Yeah, half the thing is I do need a bigger jar. So if I were to, if I like this and I plan on doing more of this, then I'm going to have to um, invest in some bigger jars. These, I have these on hand. I didn't want to go out and buy anything really. The only thing I did buy was wax because I didn't have any, but everything else I had on hand and I just wanted to use what I had on hand because I didn't want to be um, purchasing, you know, a big lot of stuff that if, if I didn't like it or it didn't work. So basically then I'm just going to give it a good stir and this is going to dissolve the, um, this mixture and, but it's going to take a while. So in the interest of video, I've already prepared a pot of this, not this color cause I'm only using half sticks, but, um, it's the same principle. So then I would do the same thing with the yellow, chop up the yellow and put it in a tin with the other colors or with the, with the colors. Oh my gosh. No, Joel. With the, um, linseed oil and the baby oil. And so you can see it's already like starting to dissolve pretty good, but 
She said let it sit for, you know, a good solid 24 hours. I think that's what she said. 20, so that's what I did anyways. So, well, it's actually been about 15 hours, but that's going to be good enough, I think. We'll see once I start poking around in this. So this one has been sitting. This is the red I did last night. And it's been, <clears throat> excuse me, sitting in this mixture. It's still kind of chunked up a little bit, but you end up heating it too, so maybe that'll help. Melt it down a bit. And um, again, she's suggesting a double broiler, boiler, which probably would be the best option to heat this, but I'm in my studio and I don't have access to a flame or any kind of heat source, um, like cooking type heat source. I have a little toaster oven for clay, but I don't know if that would work or not, or if that would cost a lot of fumes. So what I'm what I'm doing for heating my wax instead is just put some wax in a little pop tin and uh, here so that's melting and yeah, I'll just put this on here for on my little like a little cup warmer and uh, just let it kind of cook there a little. I don't want it to cook. I'm not cooking, just melting, um, giving it a little hand up on melting all the little bits and I am going to have to oh it's one teaspoon I believe of the wax I'm gonna have to double check that for sure but I believe it's one teaspoon might be a tablespoon so I'm gonna have to look I'll pause the video so I can look at my phone and see what it says of how much wax to add and you can see that that's melting it quite quite a bit so it's been sitting in the mixture and for about 15 hours now and um also now i'm just kind of putting it on this little this is just a coffee warmer it doesn't get really hot so it's not like it's gonna boil or anything um but i i agree with her a double boiler would be best if you have access to that sort of uh, thing in your studio space or you know can easily move to your kitchen with all of this stuff i cannot um so we're just going to do it this way. I'm going to pause this for a second and um, double check my measurements on the wax. Okay. So I'm back. I checked my measurements and I'm glad I did because it's actually two teaspoons. I was going to put one. Oh, so that it is one for me because I'm right. I'm doing it in half. Mary Jo. Me and numbers. I should write that number down. So if I'm doing a half recipe, so it is two teaspoons of wax, but in my case, I'm doing a half recipe. And look, that's melting pretty good there. It's like almost gone. So I'm just gonna add that, write that in here. One teaspoon wax. Just so I remember. And so that's my, and then I've been melting the wax here. And I'm just using a soy wax, because that's again what I had on hand. She uh, was using white beeswax, but we're gonna assume that this will work just as well. <laughs> and if it doesn't, but like I said, I just didn't want to um, spend a lot of money on material that I may never use again. If I like this recipe, or and, and I'm taking into account when I'm testing it, when I'm gonna be testing it, that it's not exactly, I'm not using exactly the same materials, but I am um, using very close. And so I'll be able to at least evaluate it and see if I like this. Now see, it's almost like completely, like it's really quite nice in there now and smooth, very smooth. And to melt my wax, I'm just using a pop, pop can I cut off, tape the edge so I wouldn't catch myself on any of the sharp edges and I'm just using that to melt the wax and that seems to be making pretty smooth uh, mix so I'm just going to take that off set it aside and I've got two other colors started here and this blue one I'm probably going to have to pour into something else 
because that's where I used to full stick and it's, you know, so here's the white. That's not okay. And, uh, It's been sitting overnight as well in the mixture so I'll just put it back on the heat as well let it warm up a little bit it's not good nothing's getting really hot like I can still touch everything with my bare hands so nothing's like getting hot um, you may want to use a respirator probably would be a good idea um, I don't think there's really any fumes coming off this but Again, who knows? So, you know, in the interest of safety, you know, you might want to use gloves, like hot gloves, and uh, a respirator just in case there is some fumes coming off of this. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> so that's going to melt that white for a bit. And then I'll just add a teaspoon of... wax to there I had some yellow beeswax but I thought that would really change the colors especially with the white it might tint the colors a little bit um, so I didn't want to do that so again I'm just stirring it up and just kind of trying to make it as smooth as possible Letting that sit in there for a bit. So the blue, I'm probably just going to have to wait and do later because I don't have a container. I don't think that's heat proof that I can use handy. So I'll have to find a little jar or something downstairs. But it's, you know, slowly mixing up and it's, see, it's becoming smoother. So as that mixes, basically what's going to happen, I'll just set that aside. It'll be the same as this red so, and then green eventually as well once it's, um, so the, you know, pardon my table. I've been working on other sculptures and stuff and, you know, I only do so much cleaning because I was still working on those, but. So just kind of double checking this and seeing how it's coming for smoothness. Maybe I'll put it back on here for a bit and let it kind of So basically that's the whole deal. So once this green sits for a day, then I will add the wax into it and you know, so I'll do a companion or next next day video where I'm so these two have both had their wax in them, so they should be um, good to go <clears throat> once I feel like they've melted enough the consistency there. And, uh, and then I'll just let them set up and I'll test them tomorrow and um, or possibly later today if it sets. I don't know how long it takes to set up, so depending on how long it takes to for the wax to kind of it's not going to be hard but it's going to be like a creamy paste um so once the wax is cooled off and it, everything's mixed up properly and so forth i will do a test and i'll videotape that and show you what the results are of that i mean the meantime i will also try and find a jar to do this blue and then if it more this I probably won't do it tomorrow either because it's got to sit and soak in that oil mixture. And I'll do my yellow. And then tomorrow we'll uh, come back and check stuff out and see how it looks and try it out. So it's been a day and um, 
these have been sitting. I've got um, red, whoops, just knocked something off my table. We've got red, white, and uh, a, a blue kind of uh, color. I've got a yellow and a green that I haven't added wax yet to, so I'm gonna do that as well. But So here's my testing paper that I'm gonna try with this. And so what I've done here is I've got a little swatch of blue acrylic that I've added just to see what perf happens on each of these surfaces. This is just rice paper with no treatment or anything, just collage down. Um, and then this is the rice paper with a, <clears throat> it's called, uh, it's from Golden Acrylic. Let me find it here. I love this stuff. I use it all the time in drawing and painting both because I like to draw over top of my acrylics. But so this is, um, called Golden Acrylic Ground for Pastels. And it, it goes on with a bit of a color but it's not too bad. As you can see, the color that it adds to the red isn't that, you know, interfering. Um, but it, what it does is it gives it back a really nice, so it's not slick and smooth like acrylic. But it gives it back a bit of tooth, so it's more like paper. Um, so I, I recommend you use this for anything. Like, honestly, I use it all the time for painting, not just for this kind of thing, but just in painting in general, it's a great product to add to your toolkit. So, and then this is gesso that I've put on the paper, and this is just completely untreated paper. And so what I'm going to do is apply some of it with a sponge brush, probably my finger, um, wipe it off and or let it dry a bit, and then wipe it off, um, just because that's what she was doing in the thing, was sort of putting on let the wax kind of bloom a bit and then you know let it go and then I'm gonna draw on top of it with what are my favorite uh colored pencils are these Derwent um color soft pencils which are beautiful pencils to draw with and then I'm also just gonna draw with a regular old uh, HB number two pencil so and just see what happens in those uh different scenarios so Without further ado, um, first thing I do notice is I've been poking around in the red, as you can see a little bit there. Um, yesterday, it was still quite, um, not runny, but wet. And I know wet isn't the term because it's wax, but um, oily I guess or something it just it didn't solidify very much at all whereas this morning it seems a little more solid but it's still pretty as you can see there's a, like a sort of a bit of a wax or wet uh, bit there which I guess is probably wax and or lin linseed oil um or the baby oil as well maybe I got my Mary Shields wrong this one the white is a little bit it's still pretty creamy. Um, it's not as soggy looking as the red. So maybe my measurements were a bit off on the red one. And then the blue one seems to be the nicest. The blue one has a bit of a wax bloom on top, but if you just kind of, you know, that disappears and kind of goes back into it and just, you know, but it is more solid. Now this, the interesting thing is, this one was the whole recipe. These were, these two were half recipes because I, they wouldn't fit in the jar, the full recipe, the full amount where this is a larger container. So I did the whole recipe for this, which is a full pastel and then the full amounts of the linseed oil and baby oil and wax. And it seems more solid. I don't know. Maybe it can't be cut in half, this recipe. You would think it could. But in any case, the color seems a little more transparent as well than that. Although, see how that's a lot more slick and oily. So I wonder if I add a little more, remelt it and add a little more wax, if that would help kind of solidify it a little bit. 
Or maybe I got my ratios off. That's entirely possible. Anyway, we're going to forge ahead. And uh, so what I'm going to try first is a bit of this red on everything, everywhere. So I'll just put a little bit. I'm just going to try to put it on there. Now it is pretty transparent. It's more like a tint, I guess, than or a stain maybe than anything else. And on the red, it really doesn't have a lot of effect. But the idea, I mean, obviously you wouldn't use red on, well, you might, I guess, if you really wanted to deepen that red. Look what it's, see it is deepening the red and making it a little, a little richer. So that might be a nice effect. And this is on top of the uh, pastel ground on the paper. And again, it's just kind of deepening that tone, which is, I guess, what I'd expect for the red to do. Same here, it's kind of a little bit purple, but it's not, um, you know. And then on the gesso surface, surface it's uh, got a bit of drag, which is not a bad thing. And there's the, and then on the completely untreated surface, just the paper itself. It's quite a nice, this is again, this is for toning paper or to build up color, I guess, quickly. If you were working, what my plan is, is I'm going to be doing some um, camping and I'm hoping that this will help build up some tone faster because it just will be you know, easy to take, but it, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. So anyway, so that's the red. We'll just let that set up for a bit. I'll just cover that. Maybe if I leave it open, it'll evaporate a little bit. Let's leave it. And then the white. Now, I don't know, know if the white will actually do anything or not here. So there's the white on the blue, and I'm going to be wiping it off a little bit, so I'm getting a little thick, I guess, probably. See how it really is melty under just the heat of your finger, so I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but what I had hoped for the white was that if I covered an area, then I could, you know, put the white on instead of, like, white acrylic to uh, help in adding a new color, if you get what I mean. And then this is over the one with the acrylic pastel ground. It seems a little more opaque there, but we'll see. And this is over the gesso ground. Of course, I don't really expect to see much there. And same with over the white paper, just the plain paper. But this was sort of just to test to see what it would do on a colored ground, either colored paper or an acrylic ground. Now, because that's white on white, I'm going to, I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not very well, but I'm just going to draw a circle around it just so that I know too where it is. And same here, just so I can see it later because of white on white obviously and then here's the blue which seems a lot more solid and more like what she had in the video again I will link her video so the blue of course I'm not really expecting it to do too much on the top of blue except it might tone it darker which it maybe is a little bit but it's not obviously and that's fine. I, I wasn't expecting it to do much on the blue. Let's we'll see what it does on the red. Well, that goes on to the red pretty good. Oh, with the that's interesting. How the notice the color difference between the just the plain rice paper and the rice paper with the acrylic pastel ground. That's quite an interesting difference in tone and color, isn't it? 
Hmm. That's quite interesting. And then this is just over the gessoed ground. And then this is just on the plain untreated paper. And then just for giggles sake, let's see how it applies with a foam brush. Now there's some red on there as you can see, so that's coming through as well, some of the red stuff. Or what this is called exactly what she's there's some talk of different names so I'm not sure she's named it or not officially well that's not bad let's see if I've got a brush handy that I could try a brush with it I'm just going to use a cheapy brush because I don't want to wreck a brush if it's going to wreck my bristles I don't know so that was sponge and this is with the brush Mm. Goes on very nicely with a brush, really. This could be interesting out in the field drawing with it. You wouldn't need water and stuff like for watercolor. You could just, although they're kind of big, but maybe you could scoop into a smaller palette to take with you to draw with on the out in the field. It might be an interesting experiment to try. It does stain the brush pretty good, I'm not sure. Probably just some linseed oil will clean that up pretty duly. So those are the <clears throat> and I put a bit of it on the top there just so that I could know the color because it's not see-through. Let's put these back on. Nothing gets in them. leave those open for a bit the looser feeling ones just um to see if uh see if they sturdy up a bit thicken up a bit or not um with time but i'll put them in a like under a dust cover or something so that they're not gonna get anything in them so i'll just let this sit for a minute and yeah, that's not it doesn't dry or anything. Well, that seems to have dried a little bit better. Same there. That white is really, see here, I don't know if you can see on the camera or not, but that's kind of seems to have dried, if you will. And then what she did, she kind of took a, I don't know how long she let them dry. Maybe I should let them dry for a bit. I'll give them five minutes. So I'll come back. I'll let them sit for five minutes on the papers and see what they do. And then um, come back and we'll kind of buff them as she did with the in her video. And we'll see where they go from there. So that's been about six minutes. And I um, apologize if you hear noise in the background. There's TV downstairs and birds, lawnmowers, all that sort of stuff going on. So what I'm going to do is kind of just buff off some of this and see what happens. See, that's pretty much wiping right off in the red. Where that red is, it's really making not a lot of difference. And there too. Well, it did stain the gesso nicely. And on the plain untreated paper, it really was a nice deep stain. So that's nice. Now onto the white. Practically disappears off the acrylic. It kind of comes off there. And then on the one with the ground for pastel, it's sticking around a bit better. And on the gesso, obviously, you can't really tell. Although, interestingly, I picked up 
some of the pencil there and smooshed it around. So that might be an interesting thing. And then on the untreated paper, I mean, I can see it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. I can see the difference where it is. And then the blue, again, don't really expect it to do much on the blue. Came off a bit on there. And again, similar result, not so much on the, like it stained the rice paper fairly well. On the gesso, stained the gesso pretty good. And then on the untreated paper, nice stain, pretty much the same kind of tone. This is with the sponge. And it, remember, it had a bit of red in that sponge, so it's gone a bit purple, but it still did pretty good. And then this is uh, with a brush. So it's a slightly darker when you apply it with a brush or the sponge, but not, not considerably. All right. So then the next test, I'm going to try some colored pencils. I've got a blue, I've got a peach color got white and I've got a graphite. So let's start with the blue. We'll just kind of make a few marks. First on just the acrylic itself down here just to see. It marks on the acrylic alone. And then this is just to make sure it'll go over top of the and it does nicely. Same with the white. It doesn't really change the color. The white's really having no effect it seems here in the acrylic. It's not affecting the tip of the pencil. And that's on the rice paper. Where it did, you know, so it is, it, it is more of a different, you can see the difference in color, or at least I can. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but. And it's working on top of the product, no problem. Same here. Now that's more of the true tone of the color over top of the rice paper with the ground for pastel. So that's an interesting, even the dark blue, it's just made it a richer color, but not really, you know, hmm, it's interesting. And this is on the gesso surface. And so it's, you know, it's pretty much that tone anyways, but it, you can still draw on top of it easily. Those, and this is the untreated paper. This is what it looks like just to draw on the paper itself. On top of the white and on top of the blue. In all cases, so the the color pencil works well on the top of it. Let's try a different color here, peach. Interesting how those look like a similar tone. And it's just on the acrylic. And this on the rice paper. On the um, rice paper that's been treated with the ground for pastels. It is picking up a bit more of the color. So you might want to wipe off your pen a bit or pencil a bit more for that light color. There's on the white. This is it just on its own. The blue. That's just on the paper. Surprisingly, it has less of a color show up on the untreated paper. Then the one with tree with this is the nicest probably and feels the nicest as you're working on it too. 
um, tell the red, you hardly even see. These, it, it shows up on the gesso treated ones and on the rice paper and the acrylic, but here it's like almost absent. Let's try some white. It's not transferring as much. So this, if you wanted to paint over something, this might be your best option to do. Put a little bit of the ground for pastel, I think. It has the most brings out the most true color to the actual colored pencil. But the pencils are having no problem going over top of the paper after it's had this stuff applied to it. A little bit more on the straight untreated paper. And this is just a graphite. That's going on well on all of them so far. We can go over the other stuff even, see? So interesting, if you want to actually make a big difference in something, if you want to make a real tonal shift, um, this would work the best with the, <coughs> excuse me, the acrylic ground for pastels. On the acrylic, it's not doing a whole lot. You know, same, just plain on the rice paper, it's kind of, you know, but if you want to do a tonal shift, the white on top of the would be nice. Here it is with the different on on gesso, and it works really well. And even on the untreated paper, it works really well. Now I don't know if that's gonna soaking through the paper a little bit, but that'll probably dry soaking through a little bit. That's mostly the red. It looks like. But that will probably dry pretty once it, you know, once the oil all evaporates or whatever it does. Don't text me with comments of what actually oil does because I don't know. Um, whether it's evaporation or drying or curing or whatever the correct terminology is. So, all in all, I think the larger. Maybe it's because it's a larger mouth on the tin that gets more air to um, cure. I'm not sure for the wax to set up, or I could possibly have messed up on the proportions in the half recipe a little bit. But uh, all in all, it's promising. Like, this is quite nice, the staining, and then you could just work on top of that and build up color. And if you were trying to build a nice red or something, it would, you know, it could be a really nice tonal ground to work on. The reason I'm thinking of it for camping purposes is because I'm not really a watercolor fan. And I don't really care for just oil pastels in and of themselves. They, they don't feel right to me. Um, so this could work for me. Pencils, that's a lot to carry around. But I could have them back at campsite like if I'm you know working on something I could have more materials back at the actual home where I'm but out sketching just take a what I'm thinking is at the dollar store you can get those little little things with uh, like even something like this would probably work 
I've got, you know, whatever little bits and pieces in there, but, you know, put a little bit of color in each one and then have like yourself a little palette that you could just take that out um, with you on the field, walk, hiking, camping, whatever, um, to do some, you know, just something that's, so you just scoop out a little bit, put it in there, have a little palette to carry around with you, a couple of brushes, and it's a lot less, you know, to like water and all that stuff. I'm, uh, watercolor, I'm not, a, I'm not a good watercolor, so I'm not, you know, a big fan, but, um, it, it's beautiful. It's just not for me. Um, and colored pencils, same, that's a lot to carry around a bunch of different colored pencils and they break and, you know, stuff so easily. So I'm thinking, and again, I'm not a fan of just straight oil pastel sticks. They just, uh, I don't know, I can't ever get them a color nice. So this might be a nice alternative for me in the sense that these would be colors that I could portable that would be portable that I could carry around and um, like I say if I put them in a little palette all together with a couple of brushes some q-tips and then you know carry that with a sketchbook and then be good for like getting some solid color study that kind of thing down and um, and then working from there in larger things with acrylics and all that sort of stuff and it's just minimal equipment is all I'm trying to think of here and I think that might actually work really well as long as the oil is safe to be in the plastic that's going to be the next test I guess to see if it doesn't eat through <laughs> that wouldn't be good if it ate through the plastic but you know maybe a small metal palette or something I'm sure I'll, I'll look around and see what I can find but um, some kind of little container with multiple wells would be great, would be ideal. Maybe I've got an old watercolor tin even that I could use and just pack that in there instead. And um, and then have a palette of colors and go, you know, play around and see what happens. A couple of paint brushes. And then I just need a little container of some linseed oil or mineral oil to clean up um, my brushes. And uh, that's all I'd need. And so I think it could be pretty successful. At least it would work for like sketching and getting some colors down. Um, I don't know what the long-term effect of this would be on the paper for producing final works of art, but for sketching purposes and blocking in color, it looks really promising. Now it's pretty pale, that red, compared to what it actually comes out as. Same with the blue, really. But again if you're working over top of it just to get some color notes that kind of stuff it, it could be great so i hope that uh so all in all her uh, thing her her recipe is great and i'll link that in the box below and um it works pretty well and and it's pretty versatile really it works over top of a lot of different services collaging and whatnot and could be an interesting addition to to um my arsenal of materials so i'll play around with this some more and it was easy to make so thanks for tuning in and like and subscribe all those good things and we will see you soon